NASCAR and Formula One went head-to-head this weekend on U.S. soil, and Martin Truex Jr.'s latest radio outburst has some fans questioning whether he'll stick around for another year. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove, back home. It feels good. We've got Groovy Hollow tonight, our third annual charity iRacing event. I'll have more information at the end of this episode. There's a lot to talk about in this episode, but first, there's always something new to see at Aluma. For those looking for the latest innovations in quality trailers, look no further. What have we here? It's the 6312 ESA Utility Trailer, a brand new offering from Aluma. And what's great about this model is you're getting a ton of utility and functionality. Perfect for hauling ATVs, garden tractors, and more. And you're getting all of it at an amazing entry-level price. And that includes the five-year warranty. What else? Oh, the new 8200 wide-body tandem Axon trailer, another new offering. Check it out. This one can accommodate the widest vehicles and larger side-by-sides. And lots of accessories are available as well. Check out what's new on the Aluma website. Find a dealer near you. All that information and more can be found by clicking the top link down in the description below. Begin your Aluma adventure today. We'll get to Groovy Hollow in just a moment. You can see I've already got my spooky themed shirt, maybe a hint as to what my costume tonight will be. But first, let's talk some news. Over the weekend, it was confirmed that Chandler Smith will not return to Colleague Racing. The team announced this statement. Colleague Racing announced today that Chandler Smith will not return to the organization's Xfinity Series program next season. The 2024 driver lineup will be announced in the coming weeks. This was all first rumored and then reported by Matt Weaver at Sportsnot. Uh, He also reported that Chandler Smith is expected to sign with Joe Gibbs Racing and be part of their Xfinity Series team. According to some reports, an official announcement was expected actually yesterday, but obviously that has not happened. But more than likely, Chandler Smith returning to Toyota, heading to JGR. We've already talked about this a bit. Chandler Smith would be just the icing on the cake for Toyota. They're not desperate for young drivers, because right now their talented lineup of Cup Series drivers are already very young. I think we mentioned the six of the eight Toyota Cup Series drivers going into next season are 30 years old or younger. Toyota is in no rush to develop drivers like Corey Heim, Jesse Love. You got Chandler Smith now on standby in case one of those Cup guys were to unfortunately get hurt or have to miss a week, or say if Martin Truex Jr. retires in the next year. You got Chandler Smith there in case of an emergency, so you're set. The icing on the cake. Chandler Smith had to buy out the remaining two years of his colleague racing deal, according to Matt Weaver, according to reports. Once the financial responsibility was shifted away from them, I think it was a no-brainer for Joe Gibbs Racing to go get Chandler Smith. Toyota had already invested years into this kid in late models and trucks. Bring him back in-house. He's the icing on the cake. And I like icing. A good icing, uh, to me, makes the dessert. I've got a sweet tooth. What can I say? I want to talk TV ratings for a moment, and I hate to try and pit one racing series against another. We're all motorsports. Can't we all just get along? But at the end of the day, we're all competing for, in many cases, the same eyeballs, especially this weekend when Formula One ran their U.S. Grand Prix in Austin, Texas at roughly the exact same time NASCAR ran their playoff cup race at Homestead Miami Speedway. The last time NASCAR and F1 went head-to-head was actually way back earlier this year when F1 was in Miami and NASCAR was at Kansas. NASCAR still pulled in a larger overall TV audience here in the United States, but F1, somewhat alarmingly I'd say, actually beat NASCAR in the 18-49 to demographic. Formula One has done a tremendous job resonating with younger fans here in the U.S., something that NASCAR has struggled to do for quite some time, and you saw it come through in the statistics just a few months ago. So now, playoffs are here for NASCAR. Formula One's second trip to the States, you had to wonder, would the results be any different? NASCAR, the past few weeks, really, since the playoffs began, ratings have been down year over year, sometimes by double-digit percentages. So I wasn't sure how Homestead would hold up against Austin. But if you're a NASCAR fan, I guess I'm pleased to say they did pretty darn well this time around. NASCAR pulled in 2.25 million viewers on Sunday, which is still down about 2.6% from last year. But comparing this to Formula One on ABC, F1 drew 
882,000 viewers. That is roughly a 20% drop from last year to this year. NASCAR still did not do well in the 18 to 49 demographic. They had 339,000 estimated viewers, but they did beat Formula One. They got 298,000 estimated viewers in that key demographic. So it's just interesting to compare. NASCAR is not in a good place right now, ratings-wise, I'd say. I mean, the playoffs this year have, by and large, tanked. But it is still interesting to me to compare NASCAR to the trends of Formula One. Formula One the last few years has done what NASCAR has failed to do. They reached the younger demographic. We saw a meteoric jump in viewership for a few seasons. This year, things have kind of flatlined here in the States and maybe even dropped off, it sounds like, recently. NASCAR is obviously trying new things to try and reach younger viewers. They've got their own Netflix series set to release in early 2024. And recently, they announced a new collaboration with iRacing on an updated console video game. Two great things that could bring in a younger NASCAR audience, but it's interesting to watch how Formula One's trends have risen and fallen and may rise again, you know, if we have a more competitive season next year with Max Verstappen not winning 90% of the races. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share those numbers with you because I thought they were interesting. Again, I hate to compare, but they are competitors. Both NASCAR and Formula One in many ways are competing for the same eyeballs, especially when they race during the same time slot in the same country. Before this episode gets a little Halloween twist, we talk groovy hollow. Uh, let's talk Martin Truex Jr. I hate to dwell on it, but obviously these playoffs have been abysmal for MTJ, the regular season champion. Beginning at Darlington, they were just slow and they had a loose wheel. At Kansas, flat tire on lap three, crashed out, awful luck. Bristol had a slow car when a lap down. Texas got spun out under caution, but he was just slow there too. Mid-pack finish at Talladega, slow at the Roval again, barely snuck into this round on points. Las Vegas a week ago finally scored a top 10, but it probably should have been a top 5. Bad strategy from the crew chief, they missed out on stage points. And then Homestead this weekend, a good race, gone bad thanks to a slow pit stop and untimely caution, gone horrible when Martin Truex Jr.'s engine blew late in the event. Look at the points real quick. Martin Truex Jr. was the two seed entering this round. He's currently tied for sixth, 17 points out with just one race to go. It was comments Martin Truex Jr. made over the radio during the battle this weekend that caught the attention of many fans. After that slow pit stop and then getting trapped a lap down, Truex came over the radio and said, hey, I ain't doing this anymore. Uh, here's some of what that sounded like. I think FS1 played this on Race Hub. Oh, f- joke. Those comments, in addition to just how these playoffs, how the past few months have gone, I think have many fans either half jokingly or legitimately questioning whether Truex will be back after this year. Uh, I got this comment and several comments like it on Twitter, on YouTube. So I want to take this comment, at least from out of the crowd. This comment comes from Sam and they said, if Truex doesn't make the final four, is he done for good? He seemed pretty down on the radio today. Mm, Let's get the facts out of the way first. Martin Truex Jr. back in early August announced that he will return to JGR for 2024. He's got a deal. He signed a contract. But a lot has changed since early August. Back in early August, he was riding the wave of a strong regular season en route to a regular season championship. Since he announced his return, John Hunter Nemechek was announced as the new driver of the 42 going into next year. We just talked about the rumblings that Chandler Smith and or Sheldon Creed could go to JGR's Xfinity Series team. And on a personal side, and I really don't like to speculate on drivers or anyone's personal life. I don't think that's fair to them. But obviously the tragic passing of Sherry Pollux happened since he made that announcement. I know the two of them haven't been together for a while now, but I'm sure this is still a very difficult situation for him and for everyone to process. Not suggesting that has any effect on his on-track driving ability or performance. I only bring it up in the context of future plans. He has a contract. He races for a really good team. I expect Martin Truex Jr. to return next year. He made a commitment. I expect him to honor that. But these playoffs have been a huge struggle. And the radio chatter between him and James Small, I don't it is concerning. I don't care what commentators or other media say. Oh, that's just how Martin and James talk to each other. They have an understanding. I don't know. I don't agree. I mean, Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss talk to each other that way too. 
And guess what? When they stopped winning, when they started to struggle, they broke up. So I don't know. Maybe a crew chief change is on the horizon. Maybe something more drastic. I expect Truex to return next year, but boy, these last eight weeks have been extremely rough and I'm just focusing on the track. But I got a lot of comments from folks so, you know, kind of theorizing that Truex just may be fed up with everything. Maybe he's regretting signing that deal. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Now let's have a little fun. If you listen to today's episode of Power Hour presented by Circle B Diecast, the podcast I do with Brennan Poole, we talked a bit about Groovy Hollow 3. Brennan's racing in it tonight. The race begins tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be streamed live right here on my YouTube channel. So set a reminder, you're in the right place. Huge shout out to AE Engine, Podium Esports for helping me put this event on. Should be a ton of fun. We've got Halloween costumes, themed paint schemes, and maybe a few tricks and treats up our sleeve. I hope you guys tune in tonight, and I hope you choose to support Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network. We've got some extra special incentives. If you choose to donate a certain amount, you can uh, win a free copy of the NASCAR 75th Magazine, a subscription to NASCAR Pole Position, or even an Out of the Groove Diecast. All for a great cause. Head to GroovyHollowRaceway.com. That's where you'll find the donation link, more information regarding tonight's event, And you'll also find the Paint Scheme Fan Vote Contest. And that's what I want to talk about here tonight. I just want to take a look at some of these awesome Halloween-themed schemes. Give you guys an idea of what you're going to see on the track tonight. Also, shout out some of our great partners who are also helping make contributions to charity. Let's begin. First off, Power Hour Podcast, new episode, new paint scheme. Look at this beauty that Brennan Poole will be driving tonight. Woo! Got to give a huge shout out to Christopher Darling, who designed most, if not all, of these paint schemes, I believe. The Iceberg, my boy, got a pretty cool paint scheme represented. I love that our partners are down with the Halloween theme this year and every year. Ooh, the silver, the chrome for Lionel Racing. Woo! Deep purple, like the band. Oh, Fort Worth screen printing, this looks cool. Of course, Toxic Waste is here. You should be giving out Toxic Waste to trick-or-treaters in your neighborhood. I'm sure it'll blow their minds. <laughs> Wouldn't be NASCAR without the classic Petty 43. Thad Moffat is racing this evening. Scene Vault Podcast, another content creator represented. Classic, The Mummy Machine. Does Brendan Fraser have a iRacing rig? We need to get him one. This one looks familiar. The Garage Guys, Dale Tanhart, will be repping these colors tonight. Ooh, the blaster colors look fierce. Dogleg Media, we got tons of content creators represented tonight. It, it's a fun community event. Venture, man, this car looks like it's ready to go race in real life. This is a clean looking scheme. Across the board, fun games to play. Uh, hopefully runs well in our racing game tonight. Got Parker Retzlaff from Jordan Anderson joining us as well. Ellie Productions been putting out some great content lately. Shout out. Ryan Vargas joining us as well tonight after a, a trip across the pond. Hasn't he been in Germany for a few weeks? Classic Lawless Allen colors. Appreciate them being a part of this event. Hey, I know that one. Uh, nice to see the 17 stamped on the side. Lots of love being given out here to the YouTube community. Baloney Bird. Ooh, those orange uh, bats pop on the side. This one's spooky. Understood the assignment. Ooh, I haven't seen flames like this in a while. I love it. That's cool. Getting old school Alan Kowicki vibes here from the AE engine number five. But there we go. Groovy Hollow 3 tonight, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I'll be on the broadcast as well as the very talented folks at Podium. Hope to see you there. Again, we're racing for a good cause. Click the link down below, groovyhollowraceway.com. You'll learn more about the event and also how to donate to Extra Life and and be a part of something uh, positive this Halloween season. (laughs) But thank you all so much for watching this episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR every single day here on Out of the Groove. And thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued generous support of the show. Really appreciate y'all tuning into this episode. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you tonight for Groovy Hollow 3. I can't wait.